What's up guys, it's Adrian with AC Designs and today I got a little short video for you today about soldering wires. Me and Dad was down here pulling the wires through the chassis on the 32 Ford wiring up the fuel pump and sending units and I thought well maybe while I had a chance this evening I'd shoot a video on how we solder and connect wires together and stuff. It holds up good under weather and water conditions and stuff so. Alright guys, here's a few things that you're going to need to get started with soldering. This is your your solder my labels tore off this is a resin core lead it's actually lead free i like the lead a little better because it melts faster but this is the lead free and the way you can tell the difference is when you when you melt the solder and it cools off the the lead based solder will have a real shiny almost chrome look this uh lead free stuff is kind of dull etched look so that's the way you can tell the difference if your label is ripped off but this stuff now this is not like what you use to solder pipes this is made for electrical connections and stuff, so I'll link this in the description. Here's just a basic soldering iron. I think this is a hobby co. Even though we have rosin core solder, I like to still put the the flux and stuff in here. It just helps do a better job of cleaning and helps the solder take to the copper a whole lot better. And here are your fancy, what I call fancy wire strippers. These, they grab, you got your different size wires that you can use on it, but they actually grab the wire and then strip the insulation off in one move. They work pretty cool, pretty quick. But it's hard to go wrong with the old standbys. These never let you down. They got the cutting part here where you can clip it off and then they got the different size where you just strip, strip the wires, but these work really good. And this is about a must. This is what they call a helping hand. It's just basically alligator clips. And I took some of the heat shrink and put on there. So, because these alligator clips got teeth and they're bad about, they can pinch all the way through the insulation on the wire. But they're real adjustable. You can put one wire here and one here, and then you have your hands free for your solder and your soldering iron as you're doing it. Also, when we get done soldering, before we put our heat shrink on, just flip it around. Right before we put our heat shrink on, I like to use this dielectric grease over the solder. It makes it a good waterproof and non-corrosion for years to come. And here's a box of heat shrink. You can get them in bags, but these are pretty neat. Come all different sizes and lengths for if you're running your bigger, your bigger wires and See, this one goes from 1 16th up to 3 8 inch diameter. So you got a good variety here. They're probably three inches long. I'll do different ones in the description below for you. So you got a good choice on what price range and what you want to use. And also, here's a, I forgot to show you a while ago. It's just an acid brush. These little cheap acid brushes. It's what I'm going to put the flux and stuff on with. All right, that's all the tools. Let's get started. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick on how the different wire strippers work. Like I said, these are the good old standbys. These are a, a 12 gauge wire. Let's see if I can get this where you can see it. They have the numbers. Right here, you got 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And like I said, this is 12 gauge. So what I'll do is I'll put it in the 12 gauge slot and you just pinch down and I just like to let up a little bit and just pinch a little more and just go around it and then you just hold it tight with this and I take my thumb and push and it strips your insulation off. They do a good job but now I'm going to show you what the how the automatics do. You do these the same way they have a, a 10, 12, all that like the other these are neat. They're, sometimes they get to where they don't want to work because this piece runs down and pinches and this side holds and like I said, it just strips them apart. You got to keep these old really well because they'll stick sometimes and sometimes they're just not as reliable, but if you're in a hurry or something under dash of a car, these things work great. And I just put it in there where the 12 is. You can see it. All right, guys, now I'm going to pull off some wire and go ahead and we'll get this solder joint done here. I'm going to just for test purposes, I'm going to pull off probably 
I don't know, probably eight inches or so. This is just some old leftover wire from a hot rod we built. I think it's, it's off the old wiring harness on my 33 Ford I got. All right, I like to take it and put it on the, about a half inch is what I like to do. This is number 12. So we just go down and crimp it. Or just squeeze it, not crimp it. Just go around it till it's real easy and then it just slides right off. All right, we get to the other side. A half inch to an inch. Sometimes these things can be aggravating, but Especially when you're doing a longer piece. All right, we'll get ready to, I'll show you how I put them both together and make a good tight joint. All right, basically what you do, focus, is just put them in each other like that right there. See how it is? It, it was like that there on each side. And basically what it does is you have your wires like this and you just put them together like that is they just lap over and then you'll twist them together like we're getting to here. All right, you just push them down and hold this side and twist the wires here. Okay, and then you hold this side here, take these and twist these this way. Which makes a nice low profile joint like this after we put our heat shrink and stuff. Now, if this wasn't a cut wire like you see here, I can do, you need to go ahead and put your heat shrink on before, but being a cut wire, I can slide it on here, but just make sure you do that. You put your heat shrink on or you'll be cutting this back apart and redoing it. Okay, now what you wanna do, which you should have done before you put the wires together, don't be like me, put the heat shrink on first, but I can because it's just a demo right now. I'm using a 3 16 heat shrink. We'll see how it goes over. That's probably three or four inches long. I'm just gonna test it real quick. So you'll put that over. Man, that makes a nice, nice connection. And what you wanna do is, because the solder gets pretty warm, is on your wire, keep your heat shrink away from it because it'll actually, if you have it up here too close, when you start soldering and the heat starts transferring back through the wire, it'll start shrinking the heat shrink down and you won't move it. So keep it a good ways away from it. It'll help a lot with that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put it in our helping hand here and get ready to start soldering. And I'll link all this stuff in the description with my affiliate account and just so you can, a lot easier for you guys to find it or see what I'm using. And I'll give you different price points on really good stuff or good middle of road hobbyist stuff. So it all be linked in the description below. Okay, now you see to the right of my helping hand, I don't have a sponge with me. I'm not running to the house to get one. I'm down in the shop. So what you do is you take these shop towels, like the Scott shop towels, they're pretty thick, double them over a good bit. And I just got a spray bottle of water here and just saturate it good. So when you're tinning your soldering iron and stuff, you can wipe it off that way. You got a good thin, even coat. And I'm going to show you how I tin my soldering iron. You don't want a whole lot on here. You just want a good even coat. Like this, just a basic little tin. You don't want a whole lot on there. All right, now we're gonna start heating up our joint here. Let me get y'all in a little bit closer to it. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put our paste flutes on here and heat that up. That way it goes all the way through. Basically, you just get a little bit. You don't need a whole lot of this stuff. You can heat it up and it works better. But 
but it'll pull it on up through and just makes everything adhere better and I guess it makes it more corrosion resistant. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the soldering iron from the bottom side and start heating up the, the flux and stuff to where it penetrates into the, into the wire really well. And make sure that if you're outside or have a little fan blowing, I got a small exhaust fan above me that sucks this stuff out. So, Or probably wouldn't hurt to wear a respirator either. It's just kind of hard to talk to a respirator. Okay, I'm going to wipe off my soldering iron real quick. What you want to always do is heat from the bottom. You don't want to heat from the top and daub the stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and hold until the wires get to temperature. This 12 gauge is pretty big stuff. But you'll know when it's right temperature because this will just fall right in it. And the wire, see that point the wire is not warm enough yet. The only problem with these little irons versus like the soldering gun, soldering gun's got a lot more, I guess, amps to heat it up really good. It just takes longer for them to. There we go, now we're starting to. All right, guys, that's not too bad of a solder joint. For me, anyways, <laughs> it don't look too bad. I like to wipe them off really well before I put the heat shrink. But also, like I said, we're going to put the dielectric grease over top of it so everything's just locked in there good and good and weatherproof. All right, guys, now it's time for the good old Permatex dielectric bulb grease. It's what you put in, like, your bulbs on your brake lights and turn signals and stuff. It just keeps from corrosion and waterproofs them. And we're going to put some of this over our solder joint, and then we're going to slide our heat shrink over and take the heat gun and heat it up, and it should be good to go. So here we go. You don't need a whole lot because it will squeeze out when you start using the, the heat shrink. Now we're going to take that slide, helping hand off and slide our heat shrink over. This is just a regular old Wagner heat gun I bought years ago when I was using a waterborne base coat and doing a lot of airbrush and stuff, so that's what I bought it for. And here we go. Let me get her to focus here. Guys, it looks like we got a pretty good connection here. We'll take it out and do the torture test on it. Let's 
take and wipe your little extra bit of dielectric grease off. And that, that connection is not coming apart and it's got, it has a good water seal with the dielectric grease and the heat shrink and stuff on it. So you can wire your car stereos like this, speakers, wiring hard, I mean, just whatever. It's a good skill to know. I'm not the best at it, as you can see. I was just trying to help maybe some of the beginner guys out because I'm not much further over beginner when it comes to the wiring stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out.